Old Radio Listening Society, a podcast dedicated to suspense, crime, and horror stories from the golden age of radio. I'm Eric. I'm Tim. And I'm Joshua. We love mysterious old-time radio stories, but do they stand the test of time? That's what we're here to find out. Today I chose Village of Doom from The Shadow, starring Bill Johnstone and Marjorie Anderson. The Shadow made his radio debut in 1930 as the sinister host of the Detective Story Magazine Hour, a radio series based on the magazine of the same name. This version of The Shadow was played with malevolent glee by Frank Reddick, who, eight years later, would play the doomed reporter Carl Phillips in Mercury Theater's infamous War of the Worlds broadcast. The mysterious voice of The Shadow proved so popular that publishers Street and Smith hired writer Walter B. Gibson to transform their radio host into the crime-fighting star of his own pulp magazine. In turn, the popularity of the pulp magazine inspired another Shadow radio series. This time, The Shadow was more than just a host. He was the protagonist debuting in September 26th, 1937. This new incarnation of The Shadow starred two up-and-coming radio stars, Orson Welles and Agnes Moorhead. When Welles left the role in 1938, he was replaced by veteran radio actor Bill Johnstone. In contrast to Welles' brooding intensity, Johnstone brought maturity and a sense of authority to the voice of The Shadow, while at the same time revealing a lighter side to Lamont Cranston, particularly in his interactions with Margot. Despite the comical asides, John Stone's era of the program retained much of the dark pulpiness of Wells' tenure. In fact, the episode you're about to hear may be the darkest episode of The Shadow ever. No joke. So prepare yourself for The Village of Doom, first broadcast October 15th, 1939. It's late at night, and a chill has set in. You're alone, and the only light you see is coming from an antique radio. Listen to the sounds coming from the speaker. Listen to the music. And listen to the voices. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Shadow, mysterious character who furthers the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The Shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the Shadow belongs. Today's story, The Village of Doom. Well, Margo, here we are. How do you like it? Oh, it's glorious, Lamont. What an ideal place for a picnic. I thought you'd approve of it. Well, now, let's unpack the lunch, eh? Oh, now, wait a minute. That's my job. You just sit there and enjoy the scenery. <laughs> oh, this is fun. How did you ever find this spot, Lamont? Oh, I've been holding out on you. I used to come here when I was a little boy. Really? Mm-hmm. I think the last white man to set foot here was one of the Spanish conquerors. Oh. Well, it's certainly remote. And so peaceful and quiet. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why I picked it. No one ever comes here. Is that a promise? Here, here, go away. Get away from that chicken. Hey, hey, scram there, scram. Oh, Lamont, he's got the chicken. I'll fix that right now. Look out, Lamont, you're going to fall. Shall I chase him? Well, not that I don't think you couldn't catch him. I wouldn't bother. I thought no one ever came near here. Well, I... I wasn't counting dogs. That's a nice start. Well, we'll just have to struggle along in the salad and sandwiches. Here, will you open these olives? Why, certainly. Let's see. Directions say just twist the new, improved, easy open tops. Mm-hmm. Now, <coughs> easy open top. Trouble? No. Imagine how tough this would be if it weren't for the new, improved, easy open top. <coughs> oh, still it is here, Lamar. Hey, 
Uh, did a dog run through here? Yes, he just... Oh, uh, thanks. Look out for that salad uh, bowl. Sorry. Well, we now have salad garnished with footprints. Oh, Margo, that's a shame. Who was he, the son of the Spanish conqueror? Now, <laughs> look, all I know is that it used to be very quiet here when I was a boy. Well, that certainly dates you. Did you get the top off the olives? Not yet. <clears throat> just twist the top. <laughs> What are you laughing at? <laughs> Lamont Cranston, noted criminologist, solver of mysteries, and he can't get the top off a bottle of olives. Well, for your information, young lady, this is the toughest case I've ever had. <laughs> oh, let them go. <laughs> Just relax and enjoy the serenity of nature. <sighs> hey, hey, did a boy go through here looking for a dog? Yes, right that way. Thanks. Wait a minute, come back. What for? You forgot to step in the salad. Oh, I ain't got time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know the quiet little spots, all right. I'm sorry, Margo. Oh, come on. I was only kidding. Here, turn on the portable radio. We'll have music with our picnic. There's still sandwiches. All right. Well, let's see now. Let's see what we've got here. <laughs> Ham? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Swiss cheese. <sighs> there. That ought to scare off the next boy who's looking for a boy who's looking for a dog. Oh, don't look so glum, Lamond. I didn't mind the interruptions. Oh, I'm not worried about the interruptions. Well, then what is it, darling? These olives. Oh. We interrupt our dance music at this time. Well, here, have a special sandwich. broadcast by the safety yeah, committee of the town of Old right. Men. Go ahead, sir. Mm. Good. My message may sound unusual to those who are listening. I'm speaking for the citizens of Old Mill in a direct appeal to the man who calls himself the shadow. Lamont, did you hear We're this? aware of your splendid work in the interests of law and order. And we take this means of trying to contact you. What can it be? Well, let's listen. A strange and unexplainable force is slowly but surely wiping out our entire population. All other agencies have failed to cope with this terrible situation. Unless we get aid at once, our village and our people are doomed. Please. Please, Shadow, help us. Turn it off, Margo. I make it. Do you know anything about Old Mill? Well, I've driven through there. It's a quaint little place. About a two-hour drive, I should think. Come on. Let's get along. What are you going to do? I don't know exactly, Margo. But perhaps I can at least demonstrate to the safety committee of Old Mill the old truism it pays to advertise. <laughs> The whole road. Yeah, come on, step on it, step on it. Oh, slow driving, Lamont. Where do you suppose all these people are coming from? I don't know. Cars are loaded with bits of furniture and personal belongings. It's possible they're fleeing Old Mill. They're certainly in a panic. Look out, Margo. That car stuck right in the middle of the road. Stop alongside of it. All right. Uh, pardon me, sir. Could you tell me how far it is to Old Mill? Old Mill? Did you say Old Mill? Yes, uh, we're near it, aren't we? Too near it, mister. What seems to be the trouble there? Who knows? All we know is that people die. Everybody in Old Mill has lost someone. Took my wife, it did. You mean she was killed? Maybe. Maybe she just died. Nobody can tell how it happens. But every night it's somebody. Those that have sense have gotten out. There's hardly anybody left. They're all gone. All but a few fools that think they can fight it out. But they'll die, too, mark my words. There's a car coming, Margo. Let's go. Okay. I've warned you, mister. Go back. Go back. You're driving till you do. Lamont, I have a sneaking suspicion your deductive powers are in for a few hot licks, swingingly speaking. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Margo. And in the same vein, may I remind you that this little symphony will be conducted by the shadow... We can't, we can't spend the rest of our lives bottled up here in town hall. We've got to stick it out. I know most of you men want to leave Old Mill. I don't blame you. But we just can't turn our village over to, to this thing. We've tried everything we could think of, and still our people die. Why, we ain't got enough men left to man the Old Mill power plant. Look at us, sitting here in candlelight, waiting. For what? I'm telling you, we've got to stay and lick this thing. But how, Harley? How? You try to reach this here shadow and he hasn't showed up. I don't think the shadow can do anything about this. <laughs> Perhaps. But at least I can try. Say, somebody's in the back of the hall. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't see anybody. 
Who's back there? The one you've been seeking, gentlemen. I am the Shadow. The Shadow? He's come. He's here. What did I tell you? Shadow, I knew you'd come. I hope I can help you. Tell me what it's all about. I don't know if there's so much to tell, Shadow. The story's been the same every night for months. Not a night passes that somebody in the village doesn't die. What causes the deaths? We don't know, Shadow. We haven't found a single mark on any of the bodies. If it was murder, there'd be some... Get out! Get out, all of you! Raleigh Gordon. What's the matter, Raleigh? It's come again. It struck once more. Now, get out where you can. Stop it, Raleigh. Uh, All right. Now, tell us calmly. Who is it this time? Uh, It's my curse to have to tell it. The name kind of freezes on my tongue. But you've got to tell us. It's kind of one of us here. We've got to know. Come on, Raleigh. Out with it. Harley. Yes? God help you, man. God help you. What? One of mine. You... Your little boy. No. A baby. It can't be. An innocent baby. Are you sure, Raleigh? Sure he's dead? I wish it was just a dream of mine, but... But it just left your missus, Harley. Sitting glass-eyed. Little tyke in her arms. My son. My little boy. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm getting out of old men. Me too. That's enough for me. I'm getting out of your lives, man. Run for your lives. Let's get out of here. I'm sorry, Harley. Very sorry. Oh, Shadow. You came too late. I'm afraid so, Harley. He was all we had. Why did it have to be him? Harley, go home now. Your wife will need you. Yes. Poor Sally. She'll need me. I'll need her. Margo. Step on it. Follow that car. What's the matter, Lamont? I've never seen you so excited. The son of that poor man ahead has just been killed. The shadow's after a baby killer. Oh, Harley. She's been like that ever since it happened. We can't get the baby out of her arms. She just sits and rocks back and forth and back Sally. and forth. Sally, darling. You know who's talking to you, don't you? No. Sure, I know. Give me the baby, Sally. No. Nobody can take him away from me. Nobody. They're all trying to tell me he's dead. He's not. I know. Yes, Sally. Our baby's dead. We've got to be brave. No. You're wrong. You're all wrong. Death is horrible. Death is ugly. And look at my baby. He's beautiful. He'll stir in a while. His eyes will open. He'll wake up and cry for his boss. Sally, boss. Don't Don't give way, Harley, don't. Will you all go now, please? You'll frighten my baby when he wakes up. He's afraid of people. Somebody frightened him once. Poor little fella. And he never got over that. Sally, don't. Please don't. Harley, let me speak to your wife. Lord, help us. Where is that voice coming from? Mrs. Prentice, oh. listen to me. Who is that? A voice called to me. It's a friend, dear. One who has come to help us. But I, I don't see him. No, you can't see me, Sally. But I'm close to you. As close as the spirit oh. of that little baby will always be. His spirit? Are you telling me my baby's gone, too? No, he's not gone. He's closer to you than he was in life. He'll always be near you. Yes, always near me. Now, Sally, give up the child. Here, I'll take him. Give up the child. There, that's a good girl. I'll put the little darling down in the dive then. Give up my baby. I did, didn't I? I gave up my baby to the voice. I'll never get him back again. He's gone. Sally. He's gone. My baby's gone. My baby's dead. 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 Sally. Sally, come back. Sally. Give me the child. I want to examine the little fellow. They all examine her dead. What good is it? Nobody knows anything. Death will come just the same. Perhaps, but 
Here. Watch this. What is it? As all the others. Cleverly, fiendishly, this infant has been murdered. Well, Margot, we've all deserted the town. We're all alone now. I know. Let's look about. I want to think this thing out. You've definitely decided it's murder, Lamont? Definitely. If I'd been a moment late in getting to the Prentice home, the one little telltale bit of evidence would have disappeared. Oh, it's ghastly. I found it just under the child's chin. The most minute little break in the skin. Even as I looked at it, the skin drew together and the tiny break was gone. No wonder the authorities could find no mark of violence. I suppose all the deaths had been brought about in the same manner. Exactly. The poison killed and immediately eliminated all traces of itself. Clever device, eh? I hate to have the inventor for a playmate. What sort of a poison is it, Lamont? I think it's a concoction developed by a small tribe in the Congo. Sadusella, they call it. They make it from herbs found only in that locality. And you say it leaves no trace? None whatever. It passes quickly through the blood. When the blood body temperature drops the least bit, the drug oxidizes and disappears so even a doctor couldn't trace the source. I've never heard of it outside the Congo. How ever did it find its way to this little hamlet? That's what puzzles me, Margot. If we knew that, the rest would be simple. Oh, Lamont. You frightened, Margot? Well, I'm not entirely at ease. An empty village can certainly be a ghost-like place. Yes. Yeah. Look. See how quickly people left. Most of them didn't even wait long enough to close their doors. The village deserted. Margot. Yes, Lamont? I'm going to ask you to do something that's going to take quite a bit of courage. Well, Lamont, right now I'm kind of short on courage. Would you be afraid to spend the night here? Offhand, I could think of things I'd rather do, but... If you think it's necessary, I'll stay. Margot, I can't leave here until I avenge the death of that little child. Then of course I'll stay. Good. We won't be short of living quarters. You can make your own selection. There are plenty of empty homes. Margot, listen. What is it, Lamont? I hear footsteps. Footsteps? Look, Margot. Coming this way. An old woman. Step back in the shadow of the porch until she passes. All right, Marvel. She's gone. Well, I wonder who she is. Rather a courageous soul, braving this thing alone. Let's follow and see where she goes. Yeah, she lives in there, all right. She's lit the candles. Awful old shack. But it's certainly on a beautiful site. This hill commands a view of the whole village. Oh, wait, Margot. There's a name on this rural mailbox. Oh, yes. C-A-R-S-T. Carstairs. Let's go, Margot. I'd like to have a talk with the old lady. Well, how can we explain why we're here? Let me do the talking. Pleasure's all yours. Yes, but I don't fancy the old girl. Pardon us, but uh, you see, we had trouble with our car. We thought you might have a telephone we could use. Got no use for them. Come on. It's all right, Margo. Heavens, what's that? <laughs> Gave you a good scare, didn't it? Oh, he takes good care of me, don't you, Arcus? Ah, uh, uh, Argus, good boy. Good boy, yes, Argus. Yes, Arcus, good boy. Why, it talks. It's a jack, though, Marco. Member of the Crow family. Uh, quite a bird you've got there, Mrs. Carstairs. What? How'd you know my name? Why, we saw it on your mailbox. <laughs> You're a sharp one, ain't you? What you doing here in Old Mill? Well, we've taken a house down on Main Street. Are you mad? You know what you're doing? Ain't you heard what's happened to people who's lived here? We've heard all about it. Made it easier to get a house, as a matter of fact. You know, it's my idea that uh, plague, or whatever it was, is all over now. <laughs> Pretty sure of yourself, ain't you? Well, don't you think so? You're staying here. I'm an old woman. Besides, I ain't afraid of death. Ah, 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 death, death. Shut up, Argus. Ah, 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 Argus, good boy, light, light. Shut up, I said, Argus. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, look at that. He keeps looking down toward the village. Is he afraid, too? It's stalking the town again. He knows. Argus knows. 
Somebody's going to die tonight. <laughs> yeah, I guess you'll be comfortable in this house, Margot. Thank you, Lamont. What are you going to do? I'm going downstairs, sit on the porch and watch for developments. You go to sleep and don't worry. I just can't get that old woman out of my mind. Horrible looking creature, wasn't she? You know, Margot, there was something familiar about that face. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before, but I just can't place it. Well, Margot, I, I'll go on downstairs. And don't forget to put out the candles. No, I won't. Good night, Lamont. Good night, Mother. Who's that? Lamont. 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 Lamont, it's come. I've seen it. Lamont, don't you hear me? Lamont! Lamont! Ah, ah, uh, Argus, good boy. Good boy. No, no, Argus, bad boy. You didn't do as I told you. She's still alive. Ah. Yes, I can hear her yelling down uh, there. Oh, right, right, yes, yes. You didn't wait long enough after the light went out. You go back again. Ah, oh, right, right. That's right. You go where the light is. This time, complete the job. But wait till the light goes out. Then do just what I've taught you to do. Uh, oh, I'm a good boy, good boy. That's right. You be a good boy. <laughs> Here. I better file your beak down a little sharper. There, keep still. There, there, there. That's better. One peck, and it's done. Oh, dear, dear. All right, all right. Don't be in such a hurry. Here, dip your beak in the poison. Then off with you. That's it. We'll teach those two fools. You mustn't fail this time, Marcus. Marcus, did you hear that too? What you looking in the corner for? See something, do you? Yes, Arcus sees something. He sees me. You? I don't see you. Who are you? I am the shadow. The shadow? <laughs> well, now, ain't that interesting? You're the great invisible crime expert. You've heard of me, I see. Oh, indeed I have. And who hasn't? But what could you want with a poor old woman like me? You know full well what I want with you. Oh, have you come to ask me to help you solve the mystery of Old Mill? Is that it? The mystery of Old Mill is already solved. I know the identity of the fiendish murderer. You don't say. Well, now, ain't that fine? Who might it be? It's a man. By the name of Matthew Carstairs. Huh? Ah, that sent your hand to your head, didn't it? You might as well take off the wig, Matthew Carstairs. It'll serve you no longer. Oh, you're only guessing. You don't know. You're trying to trick me. I knew your face was familiar the moment I saw it. I finally recall you had a case in court many years ago. You claimed that the entire town of Old Mill rightfully belonged to you. <laughs> All right, Shadow. So long as you know just so much, you must know, too, that the title of the land never passed from my ancestors. It's mine, mine. The court denied your claim. The court robbed me. You swore that someday Old Mill would be yours. That was a long time ago. The obsession drove you to this campaign of murder. You hope to make good your threat to the court. And I will. I'll have Old Mill to myself and you can't stop me. I have a feudal claim to the land, but a claim just the same. The state executioner has a claim on you, Carstairs. Hey, I've got a gun. And I'll use it if you come near me. You can't see me, Carstairs. Have you forgotten that? <laughs> no, but the jackdaw can. His eyes follow every move you make. Put that gun away. I'll put you away first. You're terrifying the bird. He... No, 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 Arcus, go away. All right, right. Oh, yes, yes. Look out, Carstairs. No, the bird. Not me. Not me, Arcus. Not me. Don't. Oh. It was a flame from the gun. The bird has carried out your orders, Carstairs. He struck where there was light. Uh, Argus, good boy. Good boy. Yes, Argus. 
I guess you are a good boy. We nearly had a meal. Ah, 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 good boy. Dead, dead, dead. Well, Margot, the jackdaw's been destroyed. Carstairs is dead. And the village of Old Mill lives again. Hmm. Lamont, how did you ever happen to suspect Carstairs? Well, it was a series of fortunate circumstances. First, the face was familiar. But more important than that, I noticed several trophies in his shack that unmistakably came from the Congo. The presence of the strange poison was easily understandable then. Oh, I'm proud of you, Lamont. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be. Why not? I still can't open this bottle of olives. Oh, have you been carrying them around with you all this time? Uh-huh. And take them, with my compliments. Here. Give up? Uh-huh. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Twist the top like this? Yes, but it's impossible to... Margot, you open... Hmm? Lamont, will you have an olive? Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is on sale at your local newsstand. The weed of crime. There's bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> that was Village of Doom from the Shadow here on the Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society podcast. Once again, I'm Eric. I'm Tim. And I'm Joshua. That was your pick. Yes. Shocking that you picked a shadow after a year of not being in person and you came flying <laughs> out of the gates with, let's do a shadow. <laughs> And uh, no one here ever argues with a shadow. In fact, thank you for <laughs> picking a shadow. So, yeah, why did you pick this one? You alluded in the opening that you think, it was your writing, this is possibly, or if not, the darkest of all the shadows ever. Oh, yeah. And it's not just about darkness. It's just about the bizarre assortment of things and tonal shifts going on in this. The first time I heard this, I couldn't believe my ears farcical picnics in yep. fantasite <laughs> I was... killer trained birds a, a killer dressed as a woman I, my immediate response was what happened how did this <laughs> get on the air in 1939 was there a federal holiday for radio censors <laughs> <laughs> i mean this really does make the gibbering things look like an episode of the cinnamon bear i or mean like it, a, it's a test to see like do these censors just read like the first five minutes and <laughs> yes okay that looks fine just put a picnic at the top and they'll approve anything <laughs> <laughs> right and they're like this is good this is good it's a picnic it's good mm -hmm. yeah i mean it does lull you as a listener into a false sense of security you think this is going to mm -hmm. be a light romantic romp full of weird casual racism <laughs> and misbehaving dogs and i mean since it is the shadow i i was like what is happening to the shadow here <laughs> So if we take it step by step, mm -hmm. we start with the picnic, mm -hmm. then we get to, here, Joshua, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so sure I'm 100% on board with this episode. However, I can't wait for this discussion to see if I'm possibly thinking about things wrong. There were things happening that were distracting to me. For example, the next part. What do you mean you're on the radio asking oh. for the shadow's help? How did that? How it does that work? It makes absolutely no sense okay, whatsoever. Like they say all other agencies have failed to cope <laughs> with this terrible situation. I mean, I love stories where individuals are are more effective than government agencies, but that's just <laughs> ridiculous. At some point, someone very high up in the state government had to say, "Well, that's all we can do." I guess <laughs> I guess you could just do a hail mary and send out an SOS to that guy, the shadow. 
and see if he can do this. And how? What equipment do you have that interrupts every radio station in the country? And they just got a huge advertising budget, I imagine. Yeah, and the luck that they turn on their radio right then. That was pretty oh, lucky. Yeah. And the, the other part safety is- committee of the town is in charge as well. Right. Is this some very localized version of FEMA? Like, where's the mayor? <laughs> where's the police? In, in, they give all the power to a safety committee that clearly has failed this town, if it's called a safety committee. I also committee. feel like in that ad, I know we're skipping over the picnic a little bit, but that ad, that, they're kind of kissing up a little bit with the <laughs> law and order. I'm like, ah, Shadow is... A lot of law and order, but not all law and order. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other thing is, he's a guy that can cloud your mind so you can't see him. What power does he bring to this that he can solve it? I guess if you live in a universe where all these people exist, then he's the last superhero I would ask first. <laughs> <laughs> There's others, like Sherlock Holmes. That would be a good... <laughs> there may have been a whole series of, of ads before this. <laughs> and, <laughs> Dear Doc Savage... <laughs> Please come help us. Uh, Green Hornet. Uh. <laughs> Dear Candy Matson. <laughs> Green Llama. Anyone. <laughs> We're down to the shadow. Well, what's he going to do? Well, he's invisible and. Uh... He's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just in the pulps. He's right. just uh. invisible. <laughs> right. He's yeah. got a driver and a girlfriend. <laughs> There was a great line in the picnic, though. I did get a giggle out of, hey, you, come back. What? You forgot to step in the salad. I thought that was a pretty good line. I liked it. Ah, I don't have time for that. (laughs) It wasn't just a shaggy dog joke of, well, we still got sandwiches. Oh, yeah. It was just really broad, almost vaudeville style picnic farce. And it was just played for laughs just to soften the audience up for what's going to happen next. And well, and also to get that callback joke on the olive opening <laughs> That's the good jar. Uh, olive jar as a metaphor for emasculation, yes. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Way to go, censors. <laughs> and the weird line when he says, I think one of the last white men to set foot here was the Spanish conquerors. I, I'm not even sure I understand the point of that other than to say it's remote but right. um, what does that even mean white people have an aversion to remote picnic spots <laughs> I, just think. <laughs> I think the idea is undiscovered it's territory. undiscovered territory and for us as white folk who came here what we consider undiscovered was discovered and people <laughs> did live there so undiscovered for us I think yeah. that's kind of the reference but it all contributes to making the shadow look like an idiot in this opening <laughs> He really does. Whenever he turns visible, his IQ drops by about 20 points in this era of the shadow. <laughs> it struck me as humorous that they made this plea on the radio for the shadow, and then when a disembodied voice shows up at their meeting, they're like, who is that? <laughs> right. Well, but before that... I struggle to get a sense of how big was this town because if people are pouring out of this town in their cars to the extent that it's creating a traffic jam. Yet, they, everybody knows each other. Yes. And it's a town where a single bird working efficiently can kill... <laughs> <laughs> kill a sizable percentage of everyone. Right. Well, maybe So presumably a- at some point it was the state police versus a jackdaw and the jackdaw <laughs> won. <laughs> Maybe, Tim, they were leaving the town and they were driving side by side by side. Yeah, they could be town people who drive poorly. Just eight cars going right down, taking up the whole highway. It's interesting you say that about, uh, who is that? In my head, there was a, oh, it's the shadow. I wanted to hear someone in the background in the meeting. Is that what he does? He's, <laughs> he's, he's just an invisible voice. That's who we call him? Is the Green Hornet not? <laughs> available we're totally screwed guys <laughs> so now his whole plan is uh let's break into people's houses prior to that after we've been having a great time in this episode it's hilarious uh there's a little bit of mystery and then it's horrible then it's horrible and it's yeah. not just a simple bit of horror it is this escalating horror and at <laughs> each escalation you think it's reached its zenith but there's still like one more gut-wrenching twist to come. Because when the gentleman comes in 
uh, to tell Harley that his child has died, he's almost just too horrified to even say it. And that is a a distressing enough scene by itself. But it's not outside the usual for old-time radio. I can certainly think of episodes of Dragnet in which a child died off stage, as it were, or even other episodes of The Shadow, uh, The Poison Death. There's a woman who cries, you know, my children, they're dying, and they've been poisoned. Um, But we don't sit there in a scene with her. Um, Or the one where they, uh, I don't remember what it was, where they poison their daughter and we listen to her slowly die. Oh, yeah, Yeah. in The Mysterious Traveler. But then they actually take us to the house of the bereaved. It right. is shocking beyond words. And, and she's not in good shape. And it's and... naturalistic compared to everything that we've seen. Her trauma, her grief is real. She is yeah. in denial. She is on the verge of disassociating. Yeah. In my doctoral thesis, I'll draw a comparison between pulling the baby away from her and the dog stealing the chicken in the, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I expect uh, not to get any degree for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a few angry emails. <laughs> it is really difficult to listen to that. And then the comedy comes back for me accidentally because the nurse, I'm assuming, or whatever it is she is, has the baby and the invisible voice says, hand it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the child. <laughs> and, I laugh because I have this image. Unfortunately, it's a podcast, but you guys will get it of her going. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> well, I don't know where are you. And, and then she hands the baby up, and the baby's just floating. <laughs> the baby's just floating in the air. <laughs> it gets worse. Yes, because the horror of it blocked that out. But you're absolutely right. So yes. he is performing a you. post-mortem on a dead baby floating in the air, yes. is, what, is what we're left And the imagine. nurse is saying, thank you, it's been a really weird day, thanks for the floating dead baby in <laughs> oh, front of me. No. Hand me the baby. First of all, she's got to be like, uh, which direction do I put, where are you? Oh my God. And I'm just so going to throw it in the air, you catch it. <laughs> uh, I was struck by the like really powerful preceding scene where the shadow like talks her into giving up her child Mm -hmm. yeah he's using this soothing voice at least by shadow standards and and he just immediately snaps give me the child and i I found that so distressing that i didn't think about it (laughs) i picture thankfully floating baby uh And then, Who brought this episode? <laughs> <laughs> then it takes a weirder turn that it is such a leap of, oh, it's that poison from the Congo I've heard of. Oh, yeah, there's no, such a reach. There's no fair play mystery going on no. here. All the crucial information is locked inside Lamont's head, and he parses it out as needed. Uh, yes. But there are no clues for us as the listener to think about ourselves. And moving ahead in the story nor are we ever given the satisfaction of finding out how he did get a hold of this poison from the Congo. No, he mentions that uh, I saw yeah, like at the his last house. minute. It's like, oh, it's filled with all these Congonese like, tro- tchotchkes, oh, that's like right. knickknacks or something. No, 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 went, no. Oh. Uh, he called them trophies, trophies. so they've got to be heads of animals that he's uh, hunted. I thought Tro- they were like participation right. awards. <laughs> <laughs> you were really good at Congo softball <laughs> and bowling in the Congo. <laughs> I have one last note on the horror. Uh, but the detail of the, the tiny the hole being under the chin? Yeah. Oh, it's, I don't know why that's even ickier. Yeah, the detail in here is just... It would be horrifying if that was the tone of the entire episode. It is extra horrifying because of the tonal shift that just gives you whiplash moving from picnic farces to that. Yeah. Congo fantasy football champion. (laughs) I will say... Third place poisoner. (laughs) Third place. (laughs) Cross-dressing champion. (laughs) I want to know the two birds that came in first and second. Uh, so then what happens? Uh, Pick out a house. That was <laughs> creepy moment when someone's coming and you hear the footsteps and the, at that point, old woman really distantly in the background muttering. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was a great moment, one of the few moments where I went, oh, scary, cool, nice. I really think whoever was doing the jackdaw actually did a really great job. Yeah. It, it wasn't it Paul Fries? <laughs> I have no idea who it was. Isn't but, that the uh, only human that does birds? It, but it's really well done. I totally believed it. Yeah. I mean, I don't have in my head the sound of what a real jackdaw is, uh, no, but I thought neither. it was quite well done. I thought it was creepy when it's going, light, light, right. death, death. I have never heard a talking bird impression that I go, in radio or anywhere where I go, oh, yeah, that's good. I, they all come off goofy to me. Maybe I've not been around enough talking birds to understand that's exactly what they sound like. It just sounds like a guy going, look at me here. Ah, I'm a dog. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the infanticide just softened me up. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it was goofy to me, but it doesn't matter because at that point, the entire plot of this thing was so weird. I'd say it was off the rails, but it goes further off the rails. <laughs> it was off the rails. Like, that's a. Well, hey, let's talk about this. This is a really creepy thing. You're killing the entire town one at a time. So the point is, you're not going to kill the whole town. You're hoping that after five, six people, maybe they all leave, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's the hope. So as they're not all quite leaving yet, you go, baby. The fact that he went after the baby is really horrifying. It gets uh, even more horrifying. You could have killed any of the safety commission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not to backfill this too much, but presumably the bird did not receive specific instructions as to who to kill in each house. It's just drawn toward the light. So that might not have been intentional to uh, uh, kill the baby because uh, I assume his mother was in the house too. So okay, perhaps it just moved toward the light because it seems confused and not like like our own pets who won't follow instructions, right? When it goes goes to try to kill Margo and it it tries to get in the window too soon and she is able to close it uh, as it's grabbling at it yeah, that was, with its jackdaw talons. I thought that was a great scene, listening to her settle in, go to sleep. It was really real and didn't go, <laughs> or anything weird, <laughs> just like we had silence and then the scratching. So that became very creepy. So that's another moment in this that I applaud. I knew the bird was doing something at that point. And so when I heard the scratching, I went, that's the bird. I did too, but it was vague in my head, like, how is this bird poisoning people? And it, I mean, it's kind of Mix- obvious retrospective, but... Mixing them drinks. <laughs> just like roofing the entire town. <laughs> Putting a little something in their drink. But so that added note layer of dipping its beak into poison. Oh, and sharpening it too. That yeah. was kind yeah. of chilling. Yeah. yeah, so it just ping-pongs between absurd and effective. Um, I don't quite understand the goal. You own this town? Like, yeah. What sort of lucrative situation do you find yourself in sitting in an empty town. At least in Scooby-Doo, there's like a gold mine (laughs) or like oil under the ground or a secluded, whiteless picnic area, something valuable. (laughs) He just wanted to own the town because it was his. and This valuable ice cream factory. (laughs) Well, it does have a bartender bird. (laughs) That's better than singing gorillas yeah. to get people in. Uh, speaking of animals, though, it's interesting that Lamont could not cloud the bird's mind. The bird okay. could see him. So I said in my head, oh, you can cloud the bird's mind, too? And then they made reference to, no, the bird can see me. And I said, oh, thank you. Thank you for realizing that issue with his powers and talking about it. Yeah, didn't he have that same thing with snakes in a previous episode? He oh, the, the snake could see him? one? Yeah. How did you know the snake could see him? Because the snake was like, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me mix you a drink. Oh, this is very tough for me. <laughs> I can stir it. <laughs> I hope you like it stirred, not shaken. <laughs> stirred. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, the end of this thing... I had that moment listening to the old woman where I said, why is this old woman actor playing this so weird? It's Mm -hmm. so weird. And when the reveal was, oh, you're a man dressed as a woman, I went, aha, that actually 
sews that up for me and gets rid of that discomfort I had with that performance when I realized, oh, it's a mm-hmm. guy playing. So I forgave that because yeah. before that I was like, this is terrible old it lady. It struck me as odd, but I did not think it was a man disguised as an old no. lady. It's not what you go to I immediately was, as yeah. old time radio. I just thought it was terrible acting. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I was like, that's a terrible or old casting, lady voice. Rather, I mean, yes. Just a terrible old lady voice. You know, like whoever's doing it, that's not very good. So whoever was playing that role was a terrible person, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I love the the change, though. Uh, you know, I can't do that high falsetto, but you know, doing that voice and then the give up. All right, you got me. She <laughs> <laughs> I just became a guy. <laughs> but it also means like it wasn't just a disguise; he was just hanging around the house. Yes, he was always dressed as a woman. Well, presumably because the shadow recognized him from this court case, that is why he uh, lives in disguise in the town, is that if anyone sees them, they would know he's the guy who tried to lay claim to the town. And so that's why he must live there disguised as apparently some distant relative. But if you tried to sue the town and take over and it was in court, how good of a disguise do you need for nobody to recognize you except Cranston who comes in and goes, you look familiar. Yeah. And there's no reason in the privacy of your own home to talk to your trained jackdaw in an old lady voice. <laughs> you could at least let it drop in those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> trained jackdaw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last comment about it though is, I'm sorry, Argus is a victim and maybe instead of executing him, <laughs> Lamont, you... <laughs> Yeah. You could have just, oh, I don't know, locked him in his cage and not dipped his beak in poison, <laughs> and it would have been okay. You did not need to kill the bird, you jerk. Bird I- saw me. <laughs> You're right. That Man. was personal. Couldn't cloud that bird's mind. He's going down. I think the bird is accountable. I think the bird was enjoying it and in on it. Light, light, death, death. Baby tonight, baby tonight. <laughs> Let's get a baby. Ugh. <laughs> So you could have Jackdaw then for the picnic that they would resume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trampling through their potato salad. <laughs> Stay out of the salad. <laughs> All right, let's vote. All right. Not a classic. Uh, doesn't stand the test of time uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, great conversation that we just had. Compelling from the standpoint of what? What? What's happening? What's going on? Had its moments. Like I, I mentioned the two that I really liked. It was just too weird for me. It was just too weird and too much withheld information that we weren't let in on that was just conveniently revealed to us. Uh, Oh, yeah, you know, this and oh, yeah, that. So like at the end when he says, no, I noticed all those trophies from the Congo, his fantasy football champion trophy (laughs) from the Congo. But why not tell us that he sees that earlier so that we are let in on that. So I'm not a big fan of this episode. I And I was really shocked because I can hang tight with just about any shadow and go, well, that at least was a lot of fun. This one just had me going, what? Way too much. And I'm shocked that I didn't go to my happy place and just enjoy this. <laughs> I'm hugely relieved because I thought I was going to come in going, this is the weirdest one ever, right? I mean, this is the limit. <laughs> <laughs> and to have you guys just shake your head at me and go, oh, innocent child, you have no idea. But no, thank heavens, like, this is a, the boundary of how far it goes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you feel better. Yes. Um, I wouldn't call this a classic. It's one of those episodes where, you know, the problems that exist of it now, standing the test of time, probably were problems at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Um, so it stands the test of time. It is as weird as it ever was. And it, it's certainly a fascinating bit of historical interest i don't know that i'd recommend like if you're listening to the shadow make sure you listen to this one last (laughs) right (laughs) the motivations are just so mind-boggling right it's just like oh we have to write an episode by tomorrow that it has that feel to it yeah it is not a classic but i'm gonna be totally honest this is like top five shadow (laughs) (laughs) oh no this is everything i love about the shadow amplified to the point of distortion this is a heavy (laughs) metal shadow just (laughs) i mean the shadow does have those tonal variations and this one is just so extreme just mind-bending shifts Mm, and comedy that is so bad it's good um just gratuitous and utterly tasteless violence, an over-the-top villain with a plan that makes 
no sense <laughs> deployed to achieve goals that make even <laughs> less sense. <laughs> and the end result, though, is honestly like very little to nothing else I have ever heard on radio. This is just something so excitingly different. This is definitely the, you know, the Scott Bishop of the shadow here. Um, but yes. I, I love it for that sake. And to echo Tim's thoughts, I do think it stands the test of time in that the stuff that is shocking and bizarre about it in 1939 is still shocking and bizarre <laughs> in 2021. And I will say this to its credit, that's pretty hard to retain shock value over the course of 80 years. <laughs> and yeah. I will give it that at the very least in an objective standard. The rest is subjective. <laughs> that pulp craziness is everything I want out of the shadow. I do not like the shadow episodes that are just like, yeah, I'm talking invisibly to a gangster. Those just put me to sleep. This is what I want out of the shadow. It is the extreme of what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely what I dip into the shadow for. I hope the future of mankind doesn't end up at a place where we go, yeah, baby killing. <laughs> yes, we should feel good that in 2021 that is still, still shocking. It's still yes, shocking. because so little is. Right. So exactly. Trained a bird to kill a baby. <laughs> right? Not specifically a baby. He sure. just didn't give enough thought to that that could be a possible outcome. It ranks up there with replacing a gorilla's vocal cords <laughs> with that of a singing soprano. But think of the money you'll make on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you're not upset at our feelings toward your top five shadow episodes. Oh, no, at all. It's totally subjective. I'm over here in my own little crazy cage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Zoom. <laughs> right? Tim, tell him stuff. Go visit ghoulishdelights.com, home of this podcast bunch of other episodes there uh you can comment on episodes you can vote in polls let us know what do you think about this is this one of your favorite shadows ever or are you not psychotic like that <laughs> <laughs> you will also find uh links to our social media pages you can uh order swag through threadless you can send us messages you can request episodes and you can link to our Patreon page. Yes, you can go to patreon.com slash the morals and support this podcast. And almost instantaneously, you will receive more bonuses than you can possibly dream of. Riches. Embarrassment of bonus <laughs> riches. We have uh, podcasts galore. We have Secrets of the Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society that's full of weird, obscure old-time radio shows. We have Cliffhangers of Doom where we focus on serials. We also just started doing B-Sides of the Mysterious Old Radio where uh, we do kind of part two of an episode of the regular podcast. We recently listened to an episode of Big Town inspired by our discussion of the Lights Out episode, The Author and the Thing. Um, and we haven't even talked about happy hours and access to live streaming events. People, you are losing money not supporting this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Big town. Uh, also, uh, coming soon to our threadless shop, uh, the floating dead baby blanket. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Someone's going to want it. Hey, we do live shows. You can see us perform live. We do uh, adaptations of old-time classic radio shows and sometimes not so classic. And we also do a lot of our own original work live on stage. The Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society Theater Company uh, performs in the Twin Cities area. To find out where we're performing every month, which we have been for a very long time, including during uh, – uh, quarantine except in our homes you can just go to ghoulishdelights.com or mysterious old radio listening society.com and there you'll see where we're performing that month if you can make it to the twin cities get a ticket come see us that'd be great but if you can't guess what we learn how technology works <laughs> <laughs> the the upside of quarantine was hey we can live stream this so you can also purchase a ticket and watch us anywhere in the world that night and if you can't make it that night you can still purchase a ticket and watch the recording of it uh so please Please see us perform live, and that would be great. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, what's coming up next? Next, we have another listener request, and we will be listening to The Ring of Thoth from Escape. Until then... Look out! I don't see anybody. Who's back there? The one you've been seeking, gentlemen. Is that what he does? I am the shadow. He's just an invisible voice.